all those in favor of Vivian in the final say aye. aye. Those again say nay. And eyes have it now. All eyes on me. I mean all the eyes on me. I see you came back. Because like Oliver Twist, what you heard last week, I mean the words we fed you with last week weren't enough. So like the crowd that followed Jesus, you're here for more. No worries. I'm not going to call you long short because like you, I want more. In fact, I live for more. We all at one point or the other want more. We want more from the government, more from our family and friends. We want more from those relationships. We want more out of life. Me too. I want more from this art called spoken word. I want more from my business, more from every project I ever embark on. I want more of, from God and more of God. The devil sure must be a bitch if he dares try to stop me from getting more out of this life. You see, I'm no longer the girl he used to know. No longer a slave to fear. No longer afraid of trying, even if I fail, not afraid to take, not afraid of heights, even if, not afraid of heights, so I take scary flights in order to attain new heights. I'm no longer the girl with a low self-esteem, no longer the girl who tried so hard to fit into the crowd. These days, I only worry about fitting into beautiful dresses. Now I'm just that girl who wants more, constantly pressing on, constantly pushing forward and mounting my wings like those of an eagle. Last week, as I sat down there, right close to Mano Prosper and Habib the Beloved, but not close enough to win Samuel or Freezing Paul to make it to the top five. My heart sank like sinking, like my heart sank like all the ground because all the ground is sinking sand. Like the Sahara, my throat dried up and instantly tears filled my eyes in split seconds. Tears filled my eyes and when you split the seconds, what you find is my eyes closed and silent prayer to the Father. As I stood on that spot, as I stood, stood on that spot, worried, waiting for the audience to give the verdict on the tie that I was not wearing on that day, I could feel my legs tremble. I could feel my legs tremble like vibrations from, from an air tremor and the butterflies in my stomach began to dance, Kelewu. So when Freezing Paul said to still keep up alive, life, I did. And besides, I'm not a murderer. How could I have killed hope? So when Paul Ward said, when Paul Ward said that the streets are strict and not a place for feeble mind, I knew I needed more grace to take a stroll down success lane. And when Promise to Secret said that God must have some big balls, I totally agree. I totally agree because God is the reason that you and I are still alive today. So when life threatens to strip you of your defenses, when life threatens to strip you of your defenses and saddle you with unknown depths of terrorizing fear, when tears come flooding down your eyes a few kilometers above sea level as a result of a really bad weather forecast, please hang in there and remember that he, God, gave me a wild card to slam into these finals. <laughs> It's obvious that there is a man out there who can beat his wife like my neighbor. The word God has never been more sacred than when her wife is calling for help. This is a message to men like him and his son, Timothy. Do you know that the pronunciation of the word women sounds a lot like we men? And a lot of self-insecured men sectioned up the W and sophisticated weaker sex so that they could throw all those punches on her face thinking it would make them strong and secure women. We men have always been the weaker sex with just one rib and you are smart enough to change us like TV station from CNN to MTV base. And we all dance because CNN have bad news like Iraq, Syria or Libya. Women, we men have always been the weaker sex with just one rib and you are strong enough to bear the pain, the blame that we didn't think it could bear. It started with Adam. He blamed you for being caring when you gave him the sweetest apple you could find in the garden. Tell me where is the love in sharing? Other than the bruises he's left on your back. 
Adamu, her blood pumps blue for you from frying chicken in the kitchen and you still have the lungs, the twinkle of oxygen in your lungs to call her a weaker sex man. Ain't we ashamed that after throwing all those punch lines on her face, after taking away her dimple and giving her wrinkle, you still pick the pieces of her wreckage and make you a meal. Spare me the part we are the one that pays the bill and so what? You are not the one who loses 80 to 100 meals of blood in menstruation. You're not the one who has to deal with the stomach ache and cramp that comes with menstruation. Some of these girls have taken painkillers so much they got the nickname Amaka Profin, Cynthia Buscopa, Manfuko Fervin. <laughs> Which explains why on most nights you are eager like a tiger to hear her moan like a dying chicken as you devour the fishes in her deep ocean. You vulture, you are hard working, she works hard. You donate sperm and she makes babies. So who the first four letters of hello told you she needs to be beaten to respect you? She's not an animal, she's Eve. And if you can't treat her like an egg, please leave you on certainly, certainly self-insecured, incurred expenses after subsidy removal. Men like you are the reason abortions should be available and obtainable, free of child, legalized and Christianized. But for the sake of people like Pombline, we spare you. This is an apology to all the women who have to wear all their bruises like instruction. Men. As men, we are told that we are the head and women are the neck. That we are the pillars that hold the building. But we choose to forget that when you cut off the neck, the head is gone. We choose to forget that women are the foundation upon which pillars are built upon. I guess domestic violence is a music classroom that we have been taking our boys to. I guess it's time they learn to play more violin than drums. I guess the time is now. So to the boy I slapped, you are right there. I can see you. For slapping his wife four times in a row and leaving an iron mark on her back. Answer me when I ask, how big is your patience? How deep is your tolerance? If it's not nine months long, it'll be this year. Well, you can tell everybody. Yeah, you can tell everybody. Go ahead and tell everybody. Okay. I'm the man, I'm the man. I say, um... Amaka Buscopan. <laughs> so what would I call my wife now? <laughs> Lilian Paracetamol. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Benny, what do you score, Vivian? Nine. Eight. Ten. Eight. Ten. Okay, so let's start from Plum, plum Blind this time. For this, call him 10, 9, 8, 9, 8. Wow, this will be very tight. <laughs> All right, a round of applause for the two of them, please.